CFS How to Customize a Job Sketch Creating a clean, accurate job sketch can help improve communication with your installation crews and your customers, which we know can save you valuable time and energy. In this tutorial, we'll review how to customize your job sketch so that you can get the best possible drawing for all of your CFS reports. Since a lot of the tools within the job sketch are self-explanatory, we won't take the time to review every single one. If you aren't sure about the best way to generate your job sketch, please take a moment to watch our other tutorial, How to Create a Job Sketch. In CFS, I will quickly load a save drawing in QuickDraw. and just as quickly estimate this job. Now on my reports menu, the job sketch will automatically be opened. If you are loading a previously saved job, you can always click Job Sketch in the right-hand column of the reports menu to edit your sketch. Now let's customize this drawing. On the left hand side of the window is a column of job sketch tools. Down below is a row of elements. To get started, I'm going to clear the current drawing and use AutoDraw to create a smaller version of the job sketch. Normally, AutoDraw will create the job sketch with the highest possible scale. But if you start your auto draw and then change your scale, you can draw your layout at a smaller scale. Now we can move the drawing by using the directional arrows in the lower right hand corner. I'd like to add a building in this corner, so I'll select one of my rectangles. In the lower left hand corner is a box that will display the currently selected tool. If I need to clear the selected tool, I'll simply click in the white box and now no tool is selected. To erase something, select the eraser icon. Then left click and drag over the area that you'd like to erase. Remember, if you make a mistake, you can always select undo. Selecting Edit will allow you to zoom into part of the drawing for very fine editing. By left clicking you can add to the drawing, and by right clicking you can erase. It's unlikely that you'll need the editing tool on a regular basis, but it's nice to know it's available for detailed adjustments. I could add a grid to this sketch to help with the drawing process, but I'll skip that for this job. I will use an arrow and a rectangle to designate a zoomed in view of my gate area. Left click to place the arrow and click again to place its ending point. Click once to set the corner of the rectangle, and drag to draw the rectangle. Click again to place. Let's manually draw the gate area for some detailed instructions. These five buttons below Auto Draw are used for manually drawing a fence. T represents a tie-on, E for end post, C for corner post, G for gate, and P for a bare post, as you might have guessed. I'm going to set my scale to 25 and start by drawing an end post.
Notice that my angle and segment distance are being calculated up above. I'll use my arrow keys to create a 25 foot stretch and press enter to finish it off. Now I'll select the gate tool. The starting gate post will continue on from my previous stretch. Again, I'll use my arrows on my keyboard to draw a 14 foot gate. Press enter to finish it off and the program will ask if I want to tie onto the gate. I'll select yes and the stretch will automatically continue from my gate. I'm going to add on a corner post. And use my cut and paste tool, which looks like a pair of scissors, to move this line of fence a little lower down. I'll add a dotted line to represent the existing fence. If I needed a continuous line, I would choose from the second set of black lines next to the corner post. These flip and rotate arrows allow you to flip part of the drawing vertically or horizontally, or rotate the drawing 90 degrees. The micro shift arrows allow you to expand or compress areas of the drawing. Please keep in mind that this expansion or compression affects the entire drawing from the location of the mouse not just the element that you're hovering over. The camera tool allows you to duplicate parts of a drawing. Select the camera tool, then click and drag to capture the area that you'd like to copy. Click again to place the copied image in its new location. Use the text options to add notes within the job sketch. Simply choose the desired text option and place your cursor where you'd like to add your notes. Add elements to the drawing as desired. For example, I'll add this brick pattern to my building. Choose the desired pattern and then click on the area you'd like to fill. Elements such as the compass and the truck image will change when you right click. I'll select the truck element, then right click to view different truck image options. Once you have the desired image, simply left click to place. The compass element will change orientation with every right click. Some elements such as the bushes, utility boxes, and black arrows give you multiple options to choose from. Select the desired option by clicking on it, 
Then click on the drawing where you'd like to place the element. The hedge element can actually create a continuous line of hedge. Select the desired hedge option, vertical or horizontal, and left click to place on the drawing. Then press the Enter key to continue the hedge. Now I'm satisfied with my drawing. I'm going to save this drawing with a special name because this customer wants an estimate in both Chainlink and PVC. So if my final contract comes from the PVC Scratch Builder, I can simply load the drawing into that estimate. Job sketches are always auto-saved when you save your estimate, so you don't have to save the job sketch separately if you don't want to. You can use one drawing for multiple estimates simply by loading it into another job. I could also print this job sketch if I'd like a full page version to send with my installers. For more information regarding the job sketch program, please reference your CFS user manual.